This is the second session for the introduction to physical geography, introduction to the Earth. In this session, we will take a look at the planet Earth, the size, the shape, surface location, and briefly, time. As you know, the Earth is big. <clears throat> Compared to a human being, it's immense. How big is it? This diagram gives you a representation the polar diameter from pole to pole is about 7,900 miles, and you see it written here in kilometers. This is science class, so we should be using uh, the uh, correct system. Uh, the equatorial diameter, 12,756 kilometers, or 7,926 miles. The circumference all the way around at the equator is 40,075 kilometers. So compared to a human being, it is huge. Now notice there's a difference between the polar diameter and the equatorial diameter. Well, how much is that? It's about 0.3%. In other words, it's tiny, but it's there. So the Earth is not a perfect sphere. Rather, it's what we call an oblate spheroid. In other words, it's fat around the middle and squatty. However, not anywhere near as much, say, as the planet Jupiter or the planet Saturn. Now, because it is an oblate spheroid, if you're standing on the South Pole or the North Pole, you'd be 13 miles closer to the center of the Earth than if you were at the equator. There's that much of a bulge. Oblate spheroid, that's the technical name of the shape of the Earth. Now, there is a concept in geometry called great circle and another one called a small circle. What's the difference and what is it? A great circle is the largest circle that can be drawn on the surface of a sphere, or the Earth. And it has as its center, the center of the sphere, the Earth. A small circle, well, it's smaller. It's not as big. And the center of the circle is not at the center of the sphere. There can be a great circle around the equator of the Earth. Well, what's the equator? The equator is exactly halfway in between the North and South Poles. Well, what are the poles? The poles are the location on the Earth where the axis of the Earth's rotation intersects the surface of the Earth. So the equator is halfway equidistant, halfway in between the two poles. Now, the equator is, in fact, a great circle. What we can do in order to measure degrees or degrees location north and south is we can measure in degrees an angular measure from the equator. So we can measure 10 degrees to the north, we can measure 10 degrees to the south. We measure 10 degrees to the north here, and 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 here, all the way around. We connect all the dots, and we get a parallel of latitude. In this case, 10 degrees north. We can do that for 10 degrees south. 10 degrees here, 10 degrees here, 10 degrees from the equator there, 10 degrees from the equator, 10 degrees, 10 degrees, 10 degrees, etc. And we connect the dots all the way around the Earth and we have a parallel of latitude. So we have 10 degrees north latitude and 10 degrees south latitude. And we do that all the way up to the North Pole and all the way down to the South Pole. Or I should say, to the North Pole and the South Pole because down or up it is irrelevant, it's meaningless. All right, that will give us a location to the North or the South. Now, how many parallels of latitude are there? Well, it turns out 
if one thinks about it logically, there is an infinite number because we can measure and measure and measure and then go half step, half step yet, half step yet. And so there's an infinite number, but we can't get any more than 90. From the equator to the pole, it's 90 degrees. From the equator to the pole, it's 90 degrees. So you only have 90 degrees of latitude. 90 degrees to the north, 90 degrees to the south, which brings up another point is that you have to put the direction designation along with the latitude. So it's going to be 80 degrees north or 20 degrees south. Every single parallel of latitude must have a direction designation. North Pole does, South Pole does. There is one that doesn't. What is that? That is the equator. And why? Because there's only one of them. So we don't need to put a direction designation. There are some special latitudes. North Pole, which we've already briefly discussed, Arctic Circle, Tropic of Cancer, the equator, which we've already discussed, Tropic of Capricorn, Antarctic Circle, and then the South Pole, which we very briefly discussed. I want you to remember these. Not only do I want you to remember the names, I want you to remember the latitudes, the actual numbers and the direction. Why? Because it's important with respect to the, the relation between the Earth and the Sun and the receipt of solar radiation and then weather and climate. All right, here's where physical geography and cultural geography intersect where we take the different latitudes and we break them up into latitudinal geographic zones. These are, of course, subjective, but it, as I said, it's where cultural geography and physical geography intersect. So we talk about the Arctic. Well, what's, what do you know about the Arctic? It's cold. Here are the tropics. What do we know about the tropics or the equatorial area in the tropics? What do we know about that? It's hot. It's that type of thing. All right, we measured degrees, measured degrees, location north and south. Now we can measure location east and west by using longitude. And again, we use angular measure, that is uh, angles, radial measure is another term for it. We pick a spot. It can be any spot, doesn't matter. And we measure degrees around the earth at a particular latitude. And then we go directly north or south. Say we pick that spot right there. And then we measure 30 degrees. Or better yet, let's do 60 degrees. And then we go directly north, plotting out all the points due north from that spot point and all the points due north from that point. So we have 60 degrees along this line here. That line from pole to pole at 60 degrees from our zero point, that's called a meridian. Meridians run due north and south, due north, due south. And they are a certain number of degrees from the prime meridian, which is our zero line. Why is the prime meridian here? Why is that, that the prime meridian? It's a matter of culture. It is not, has nothing to do with uh, physics, or if it, not physics, but, in, but with physical geography. It is a cultural designation. The prime meridian was chosen there because in 1884, when it was chosen, the United Kingdom was the world's superpower. All right, now, we measure degrees east and degrees west. And again, just like with parallels of uh, latitude, the meridians of longitude must have a direction designation with two exceptions. One, of course, is the prime meridian. There's only one of them, so you don't need a direction designation. The other one is the 180th meridian right there, which also is unique. There's only one of them, so we don't need to have a direction designation. 
And how many meridians of longitude are there? Just like with parallels of latitude, there are an infinite number because we can go halfway, we can go halfway again, halfway again, halfway again, halfway again, and we're never going to get to the particular point. So there's an infinite number of meridians of longitude, an infinite number of parallels of latitude. When we talk about latitude and longitude, latitude always comes first. Always. Now, here's an interesting thing. Let me back up a minute and take a look at, yeah, this diagram. Here we have the parallels of latitude. What's the opposite latitude? for 15 degrees north latitude. Well, going right through the center of the earth, oh, it would be 15 degrees south latitude. What's the opposite latitude for 90 degrees north? It would be 90 degrees south. Opposite latitude for 75 degrees north, it would be 75 degrees south. We can do the same thing with longitude. This is a, a good one because the good diagram because here you can see the prime meridian stops at the north pole and the 180th degree meridian stops at the north pole what's the difference between the two of them 180 degrees what is the difference what is the opposite uh, longitude from one from 30 west well going across here and we find it's 180 e 150 east What's the opposite uh, meridian from 60 degrees west? It would be 120 degrees east. How many degrees is there between the opposites? It's always 180 degrees. It's a halfway around the circle. The thing is, with both the latitudes and the longitudes, it, the, the hemisphere changes. In one case, the numbers change here for the meridians. The numbers change, but they're 180 degrees apart. Parallel is the same number, but it's in the other hemisphere. All right, now, meridians do something that parallels of, of latitude do not. They converge. Parallels of latitude are just that. They're parallel, so they never touch. They never get nearer to one another. They're always the same distance apart. Meridians, on the other hand, they converge. They converge toward the pole. So, say from, what is it, 0 to 30, 0 degrees to 30 degrees east, there's a certain number of miles in between, or a certain number of kilometers. As one moves toward the pole, the number of kilometers between 0 and 30 becomes less and less and less until all meridians converge right at the pole. We can designate places, in other words, by latitude and longitude. Taking a look at latitude, longitude, and we have the geographic grid. This is a way in order to locate something on the surface of the Earth. Let me go back here. This is a little bit larger globe, so we can uh, make a little bit more, uh, get a little bit a better idea of how to do this. That point right there, we know it's 40 degrees north and it's 10 degrees west. So we would say that point is 40 north, 10 west. That point would be 50 north, 20 west. This point here would be 50 north, 40 east. Um, that point would be 10 south, 10 west. Again, always putting latitude first. Always latitude first. Now, what is the longitude? of the North Pole. You see the meridians get closer and closer and closer. As you can see here, they get closer and closer and closer. What's the, what is the meridian of the North Pole? What is the longitude of the North Pole? Well, there isn't one. It's 
technically it says it, uh, people talk of it as being undefined. That's the way he's saying it just doesn't exist because all of the meridians of longitude converge. All right, so we have our latitudes, our longitudes, and the geographic grid. This is a way we can locate places on the Earth. Very common way of doing it. Now, time. I was hesitant to bring this up, but I will bring it up anyway because people often ask about it. In 1884, when the prime meridian was decided uh, in a conference held in Washington, D.C., the developing countries of the world, because there were no developed countries at that time, the developing countries of the world, Russia, Japan, uh, France, Germany, Italy, uh, Spain, uh, the United Kingdom, the United States, held a conference in Washington, D.C., uh, called the Washington Conference, and it was decided at that time where the prime meridian was going to be, and then uh, set, they set up uh, uni, uh, excuse me, standard time zones. We have a rotation period of 24 hours, correct? Yes. How many degrees of longitude are there? 360. Divide 360 by 24, and what do you get? 15. So the Earth rotates through 15 degrees of longitude every hour. Therefore, a standard time zone will be 15 degrees of longitude from one side to the other. The way it's set up is that the central meridian of the time zone, the central meridian of the time zone, which is not uh, delineated here, the central meridian for this particular time zone would be right in the middle of that 15 degree breadth of longitude. And then so seven and a half degrees on each side of that central meridian is within that particular time zone. Now, of course, through time, what do people do? Because people are political, they take the standard time zones and they make hash out of the boundaries. <laughs> and so this is what we have today in terms of standard time for the world. Anyway, for, for instance, let's take uh, a place called Cupertino, California. It's in this time zone here, the yellow zone, called, we call it Pacific time zone because that's the, United, the U.S. designation of it. Here in the United Kingdom, it's eight, eight hours difference. So there's an eight hours difference. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can get a rough guess as to what the time is at a different place simply by getting uh, a map showing the time zones. All right, I think that's sufficient for this particular session, and we'll take up one further session uh, for the introduction.